Retire with Manjula, a show about giving, featuring non-profit organizations, social activists, social entrepreneurs, and philanthropists who are giving back and making a difference. Retire with Manjula is a show that is a must-see. Today, an exciting revolution, turning school textbooks into flex books. Welcome to Chai with Manjula. Today we'll give you a glimpse of how future generations will receive education as their textbooks go digital. My guest is Neeru Khosla, the co-founder and executive director of the CK12 Foundation, a non-profit organization which is turning school textbooks for kindergarten to 12th grade into flex books, books that are flexible and free online. Neeru and her husband Vinod Khosla are well-known philanthropists and they happen to be one of the 40 billionaire families in the U.S. who have pledged to give at least half of their wealth to charity as part of the Giving Pledge, a campaign launched by Warren Buffett and Bill Gates urging the rich to make a moral commitment towards making the world a better place. Neeru, welcome to Chai with Manjula. Thank you. Uh, well, it's fascinating to learn how school textbooks will be taking a totally different form in the years to come. So what called for this change and what are some of the issues with the uh, textbooks the way they are right now? Well, you know, I got interested in education because of my four children. Okay. And when I started looking for a good school for them, I looked around and I said, well, what makes for good education? And the more I looked into that issue, the more I realized that the way we were providing education um, content to students or the lack of it was one of the reasons, you know, children were not getting motivated to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, and textbooks is an old technology. Being in the Silicon Valley, it just baffled me that nobody had really stepped up to improve that technology. I, uh, I, I call it a technology. Mm -hmm. And so I said to myself, um, what can we do about this, te this old technology, number one? And the more I looked into it, the more I l realized that there were things like cost. Uh, you know, California spends, uh, well, they did until they had the fiscal, you know, issues, mm -hmm. uh, about f half a billion dollars on mm -hmm. textbooks. Together in in the states, it's billions of dollars of industry, mm. and you know that th that doesn't need to be so. And one of the reason it's so costly is that updating con content or updating uh, textbooks or fixing textbooks is very hard to do. Once they're printed, they're printed. So it takes a cycle of about you know five, six, seven years for. Uh, to be cost effective. Right, right. Right. So that was one of the reasons I said, I mean, in this day and age of information, why is it that we are not, you know, why aren't we changing the very important thing that makes our children, gives the basis for our children to learn and, and kind of ba forms the basis of their uh, understanding of things? Mm -hmm. um, you know, then you have in the U.S. particularly, you know, content that's required for 50 s different states right. based on 50 different mm -hmm. requirements, uh, you know, and, th and that's something, you know, I think is a huge issue, not only in the U.S., but requirements. I mean, really, frankly, there are only so many concepts you need to learn right. in the K-12 arena to be mm -hmm. educated. Mm -hmm. So these were the number of things that impacted the decision on when I kind of turned, my kids started growing, uh -huh. going to, you know, college and high school. That's when I decided, what am I going to do next? Okay, so that's when you had time to look into it seriously. Exactly, exactly. And it was something, you know, just said, you're just giving text and illustrations to mm -hmm. kids. Yeah. And not everybody responds to that. Right, 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 right. Some kids learn if they're shown videos. Some kids learn if they can, you know, see simulation. They can mm -hmm. work with things. They do projects and mm -hmm. they do. So there are very different ways. It kind of, the learning is internalized okay. for students. Mm -hmm. So just to give them text to read. Mm -hmm. uh, and given that, you know, not just the U.S., but everywhere in the world we're getting... A kind of a mixed pot 
of people with different right, languages, right. different cultures. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we're still making them learn, you know, a cricket field, uh, uh, you know, a parameter of a cricket field or a or uh, or a basketball field when it doesn't make sense to a student in a village or. So what you're saying is that the books are uh, textbooks, the in printed form are very rigid, yes, very hard to change, yes. and they are not personalized. Yes, absolutely all. right. You, okay, you got it. I see. So when did you start CK12, and what is it about? So CK12 was started in 2007 January. Um, before that, I came across a um, couple of projects that kind of were very in intriguing. Mm -hmm. And then I met, uh, well, you know, and, and my husband introduced me to Morgan Powell, who mm -hmm. is a technologist. I see. And, you know, I said, it was then we said to him, hey, can you help us? Because I'm not a technologist. Mm -hmm. And then I said to him, that, is, there, is it possible for us to kind of think about a new technology? Mm -hmm. Could you help us design a technology? Well, he had just finished working with another company, and he was in, in between, and he started helping me. And that's when we started thinking about what are the possibilities okay. in, for us to design a system mm -hmm. that could replace okay. a textbook. Mm -hmm. And textbook being... It shouldn't be just one format, single modality. It should be able to have everything, make it a living thing. Um, CK12 is a change agent. Okay, so how many books have you already converted into oh my flex God. books? So um, it's not converted, actually. Oh. It's created. Because oh. our license is to give away everything for free. Mm -hmm. And so we can't take copyrighted material. Oh and just give it away and let people own it and use it and do whatever they want with it, in, in short, customize it. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we had to ultimately not only create the system, we had to create the content itself. So first we tackled STEM, the science, mathematics, technology, engineer, engineering topics, mm -hmm. and we said, let's help create those topics so that the, this content is available even, you know, um, even if you don't have a computer mm -hmm. and you have access to a computer, we can actually allow you to create your whatever you might need mm -hmm. and print it out. Okay. Okay, so that's one way of, we want to empower teachers, we want to empower school districts, we want to uh, empower countries, we want to empower the students themselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to create content that's relevant to them. Okay. okay, so not so much, you know, I don't know whether you know the story when uh, uh, in the microfinance field when Dr. Yunus uh, gave his first giving to about 27 women uh, uh -huh. with four, or the other way around. Microfinance. Yes, and he yeah. gave those small dollar amount and he said, I remember the look on those women's faces and the tears and, you know, rolling down, the power of empowerment. Mm -hmm. is just unbelievable. That's true, that's true. And that really is what we wanted to do, to make teachers feel like they could do anything they wanted to mm -hmm. teach students, to get across to students. Mm -hmm. In a so have some of these books been adopted by schools? And if so, what kind of response have you gotten? Um, so you have to keep in mind that this is you, uh, this is probably our second year of really being out there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so far, we have had over five million downloads and usage, mm -hmm. and people are creating their own. You know, one of the things that we committed to was that we were not going to ask anyone to sign in or, you know, be part of, uh, it was free. So we wanted to keep the free culture going as much as possible. Okay. So it's really hard for us to kind of really know uh, at some point what people do with the books. Once they download them, mm -hmm. they can do, any, they, they have them in their computers, they can do anything we want, they want with it. We don't restrict any of that. Mm -hmm. But we do know, um, you know, from, when we put these things, uh, our books on Kindle or on the iPads, mm -hmm. we never, uh, you know, 
advertise any of that. Within a couple of months, we had over half of um, 500,000 downloads uh -huh. of the books. We had put, put about five books on, okay. on the Kindle. Okay. And now we're, we're over one million um, you know, downloads. And with how many books? Oh, but probably about 10 books or so. Okay. So uh, we, don't, we have about 35, 40 books okay. altogether. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, actually, even more now. What we do is we take a subject, any subject in high school, any subject in, in science and math in middle school, all the library is available for you. Mm -hmm. It's a complete library. Okay. And so what we do is uh, we provide, we try to provide three different levels of each one of these textbooks. Mm -hmm. So one would be at grade, one will be remedial in the event somebody is okay. at a lower level, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the third will be advanced. Okay. Yeah, that's you know, very customizable just, and adaptable. Says, like I said, you know, in the uh, uh, earlier on, I said, you know, access is very big mm -hmm. for students um, to learn. If you don't have access, okay. how are you going to learn? So what kind of uh, challenges uh, do you face in producing or using these books? Uh, so in the U.S. particularly, mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about that first. Uh, in the U.S. particularly, everything is uh, regulated in terms of K-12 education. And these books, since they are free, mm -hmm. uh, and since we've been around so, so small a time, mm -hmm. we haven't gone through the adoption process itself, which is a very political process. And, you know, it involves lots of money, and it's been around for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't, uh, in fact, there's a, uh, essay by uh, Richard Feynman, and, and you can Google it, and you know mm -hmm. you can find it and read it. It's a very interesting article on adoption process. But uh, what we find more and more individual teachers are starting to adopt that. We have had charter school groups like Leadership Public Schools, mm -hmm. who have what they did was this is this is actually the power of the system where uh, they've taken our textbooks, put a literacy layer on top of that. So every, you know, every now and then they'll ask in a regular interval, well, what did you understand from this? You know, so the people, mm -hmm. students who are behind mm -hmm. can actually understand and reflect. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the most important things in learning, to be able to re reflect. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we provide an interactive um, program. It's called Flex Math, uh, and in that, right now we have algebra, complete algebra version of it, mm -hmm. and it's it it helps you practice. Remember, I don't know, did you get your education in India? Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. you remember we were beaten with rulers if we didn't have our times <laughs> tables <laughs> in our right, mind, right? right? Anytime we hesitate, boom. So. Memorize everything. Memorize, you know, there are certain exactly. Tables. There are certain things that have to be on the top of your, head, you know, top mm -hmm. tip of yeah. your ta right. tongue, right? right? Because you need those all the time. Mm -hmm. And yes, you can use a calculator or, and all that, but you need to exercise your brain. It. Yeah. So if you have those facts, two times two is four, or mm -hmm. ten times twenty is two hundred, right? Mm -hmm. They come automatically to you. Right. That's one of the big things that's missing in education yeah, because, because it's boring. Right, 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 right. It's not challenging enough. Not you challenging. have calculators and uh, exactly. Why should I do this? It, it requires a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. So this program by itself generates auto questions. Mm -hmm. So students can just, you know, it, students can just keep practicing till it becomes automatic, basically. So you're done with that portion. Mm -hmm. And the reason we want to make, you know, this available is so students can actually get past that basic, uh, you know, basic stuff without realizing it's mm -hmm. boring. So schools like LPS did that. Okay. And this year we found that the school that's been doing this for about three years has had from 5% proficiency to um, uh, over 90 Plus percent. Really, yes. that is remarkable. Then the second campus on the same group mm -hmm. has had 
a proficiency improvement of about 58% uh, in one year. Wonderful. So, uh, we went to do this with Riverside Unified School District, and mm -hmm. there we had over an almost 100% improvement. Great. So Envision, Higher Charter Schools, uh, many, many of these, you know, places we are starting mm -hmm. to work with are mm -hmm. showing this kind of results. So what is your vision? This is really exciting. Do you see Flexbooks going nationwide, worldwide in the coming years? And uh, also, what is your vision for uh, how the education system will evolve in the coming years? So, you know, what, what's happened with the education system, because it's it takes care of public or, you know, uh, uh, what do we call them in in, in India? Uh, pri uh, private schools? Not private school, uh, schools. Right? Government schools, right? Yes. Government schools and public schools, because they have to cater to so many students. Mm -hmm. Have uh, you know they've try try to reduce it to a formula, and you know with so many different minds, even in a classroom mm -hmm. of twenty or thirty students, you know that each, they, you know they're a different student. They require different. Uh, things, their ideas are different, their interests are different, it's really hard to formalize education. Mm -hmm. So my my belief is, I, you know, I think if I had it, I, I myself would have been a different place today because, you know, I couldn't learn mm -hmm. in, in the way I was supposed to learn. And, and today, too, students are the same, in the same situation. So my vision is that if we can provide you know, still have an envelope standards or mm -hmm. requirements, whatever you might want right, to call right. them, but you still provide a somewhat individualized passion, uh, right. a path. Right. And, you know, for me, it's almost like taking that passion and giving it a purpose. Uh -huh. So passion with purpose. Okay. So another question comes to mind is, will flex books lead to homeschooling? More and more homeschooling because, as it is, you know, schools are becoming unsafe with guns and drugs and shootings and whatnot. So, if parents could have access to all these textbooks, they could do homeschooling, or maybe they could gather children in a neighborhood in a, a safety of a home right. and hire one or two tutors That's for schooling. And as it is, they do all the extracurricular activities after school. The mothers drive the kids around for music, sports, and all that, so that they can still continue. So, what do you see? In the future. You know, that's very possible. I mean, the one couple of things that schools do um, tend to bring is um, this uh, gathering of different minds together. Mm -hmm. So in terms of smaller schools, I mean, yes, you might learn facts be better. Um, you know, I would want to expose my kids to different minds so mm -hmm. they learn from their peers. I see. about different thinkings, mm -hmm. right? Otherwise, you're going to think the same rigid way. So in terms of homeschooling, again, I think it should be, again, a very much a choice how you want to learn. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, granted, the very little kids don't really know. Mm -hmm. You know, you can pick it up as a parent. You can pick it up. Right. This is how my kid is learning. Right, right, right. But actually, if you could provide for them Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think v my vision is that let people learn, and if they want to do small schools, great, but I still would like to see larger schools too. I see. You are also involved with other organizations. You are on the advisory boards of uh, organizations like Wikimedia and Donors Choose. So tell us about some of them and what impressed you most about them. Um, Actually, when I started out, I never thought I, you know, this boards and all were not anything I <laughs> actually ever wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I'm actually pri quite a private person. But with when I started education, that's where when I came to this school called Nueva, up in Hillsboro, mm -hmm. I absolutely fell fell in love with the philosophy, which is which is about the child, which is about. Uh, innovation, which is about constant change. Mm -hmm. What's the school? Nueva. Nueva. Okay. Yeah. It's we'll a private it school. Okay. And uh, they term it as for the school for the gifted, but it, that's not what it kind of uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. interested me. It was mm -hmm. the way they approached 
education. I see. Lot, you know, we, we invented manipulatives in India, mm -hmm. but we don't use them as much as, you know, when I come to the U.S. and, you know, places like Nueva are mm -hmm. doing learning math for kindergarten, first, second, third grades by manipulatives. I see. And so that was very fascinating, and I got very quickly involved in that and was asked to be part of the education committee, so had that, and I looked for innovation. And I, I, I think innovation is very important. What mm -hmm. we've forgotten to do in education is it, how to do innovation and use, use, use yes. it Wisely. And cultivate the child's mind, stimulate Exactly, them. exactly. Yeah. The place for innovation. I see. Right? That's, that's what we've uh -huh. forgotten to do. And that's really where I pushed a lot at Nueva and learned uh -huh. a lot about education and innovative programs that mm -hmm. work. You know, you don't have to swing the pendulum. Uh -huh. You can actually just do this very wisely and introduce those things into your um, into the education. We, Donors Choose was another one that I really fell in love with because it took care of something I was passionate about. And, and it was about education, taking care of broken system where, you know, there was no funds available, the cost going through the roof. And teachers, I went to the Harlem and teachers didn't even have $200. They would have $200 to buy equipment for their classroom. So you have a strong passion for education. Maybe I really do. As a mother or is it your background also? Well, as a mother plus what could I have had? I mean, mm -hmm. I think till about middle school, end of middle school, I was a poster education child and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, like every, it, it happens to many women or girls mm -hmm. that after middle school their interest or their focus goes off. Mm -hmm. So I had had some of these methods okay. that we provide mm -hmm. uh, to students in innovative schools okay. like Nueva. I, I see. Think. Now on a personal note, you and your husband Vinod Kosla have pledged to give half of your wealth to charity. So uh, what I want to know is what kind of responsibility comes with wealth and what does it feel like to use it for social good? Well, this is a very difficult question for me personally because I don't believe, uh, you know, I have wealth. <laughs> okay. You are being modest. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Uh -huh. I, I think I would have been like this had I not been married to Vinod. You know, there's so many aspects of wealth um, that you could look at in particular light. Mm -hmm. One is, you know, uh, uh, the economics and that, uh, you know, creating jobs and all right. that, you know, that right. by itself, mm -hmm. if you wealth keep putting creation. wealth creation. Mm -hmm. It's like when I really realized that, you know, from microfinance, that you that when you donate to for micro or you give money to microfinance, you will get something back at the end, and that was a shocker to me. And I said, uh -huh. "Wait, I, this is about giving. This is right. not about making." Uh -huh. So what both Vinod and I said, we were not going to use any of the money we made from microfinance. Mm -hmm. We were going to put it back into giving it back to okay. the people. Any particular causes that are close to your hearts as a family? Um, you know, all of us have our own. You know, I love education. Okay. Um, my daughter loves uh, animals and uh, health, international health. Okay. My, uh, you know, Vinod loves poverty and mm -hmm. all, you know, all the rest, you know. Uh -huh. And so we pretty much do what, uh, what we really think will make an impact on the whole society. I see. And one of the main points we look for as a family is, is, Will it be able to, so if you give a person $20, mm -hmm. will they be able to stand on those $20 or right, not? Right. right now, any idea of which projects you will be supporting actively in the coming years? Oh, coming years? I'm oh. sure a lot of organizations will be approaching you for help. So what do you look for in an organization? Is it the people, the model, the cause? All the above, mostly people, mostly what they're 
you know, I, I, at the end of the day, for me, you know, Vinod has a more organized structure, or, you know, with business structure. But mm -hmm. for me, it's more like, uh, what's the idea? Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. And I look at it mostly from my own lenses. I see. And say, will it make impact? And how will it make a? You know, you can make an impact to a small community, mm -hmm. and that's impact. And mm -hmm. you can pick up that project uh -huh. and give to that. You know, we give to IAF, the American right. India Foundation, yeah. right? So the whole idea there is we think they're making an impact in India. Right, right. At 12 we're doing a you know, study um, mm -hmm. with villages, 10 villages, mm -hmm. and seeing how, um, you know, uh, e-learning will help those village students. Okay, so now tell me, you have been privileged enough to be able to help out, to make a difference in the world. What does it do for you, for your soul? Spiritually, what have you gained? What giving. are the joys of giving? I don't look at it like that. I mm -hmm. think it's a moral obligation to give. I see. To share. Mm -hmm. Because the way the world works, or our economics world, you know, it can just go to one end mm -hmm. and stay there. And so I think you have to help people around you to grow. Otherwise, you know, your children aren't going to grow. That's and true. that's always my motivation. Mm -hmm. You have to help people such that your children can have. Yeah. Help your neighbors yes. if you want to flourish also. Yes. So uh, what is your message about social responsibility for our viewers? You know, the one thing that I would tell people it, there, there, there may never be joy in giving, okay? So don't look for joy. That's a very mm -hmm. selfish motive. Okay, that's okay. a new perspective. Yes, okay. very selfish motive. Mm -hmm. But but think about the difference you might make. Mm -hmm. And and don't stop to think, I'm the only one who's doing it. Mm -hmm. And think like, or oh, one person isn't going to make the difference. Mm -hmm. Take that step. Mm -hmm. Make that difference, even if you're the only one. Wonderful. You know? that's so... Do it. Okay, great. On that inspiring note, Niru, I thank you very much for thank coming you. and telling us about CK12. It's really a major breakthrough and a 21st century approach mm -hmm. to education. I congratulate you. Thank wish you. you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show. My pleasure. That's all we have for you today. Our guest was Niru Khosla, the co-founder and executive director of the CK12 Foundation. As we just learned, CK12 is transforming our education system by turning school textbooks into digital books called flexbooks. These books are not only free online and printable at low cost, but they are also flexible and can be customized to ensure quality and consistency in the education systems worldwide. To learn more about this remarkable project, go to ck12.org. And to watch this show again, go to chaiwithmanjula.org or YouTube. Thank you all for joining us. I'll be back with another inspiring story about giving and people making a difference. For Chai with Manjula, I'm Manjula Gupta. See you next time.